Marni and Janji. You are establishing your own family line for the rest of time tonight. All of your history and ancestry is joined tonight. Yep, that's the luck. Your future and the stories your children and great-grandchildren will bring to the world all begin tonight. Marty and I had been dating just under a month, and her friend Brittany invited her to join her and her husband on a trip to Belize. We agreed that for most couples in most situations, this was probably a bad idea, <laughs> but it was different than every other relationship we'd ever had, and we just we knew that this was, this was gonna last. So we went on this trip, and on day one, we found a kayak in the shed of our rental house and thought we should take it out on the water. Somehow we got so incredibly engrossed in our conversation that we realized we couldn't find our way back to the house. We went in circles, we were asking strangers in Belize if they knew where we lived. Um, they didn't. But we finally, finally stumbled back on, on the house a few hours later. <laughs> and it could have ended in a huge fight full of blame and resentment but we managed to laugh at every single wrong turn and just couldn't believe the amazing adventure that we had had together. Fast forward three and a half years and we still can't believe the adventure that we're on. As you all know, the weather for the past couple of weeks has been very effy. Is it going to rain? Is it not going to rain? Marcel had a hotline to heaven. So she called God on his direct line and said, Mr. Hashem, sir, uh, I don't know if you're aware of it, but we have a little uh, wedding going on this uh, weekend. I, I beseech you, in the name of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, could you keep the rain off for a little bit? And I tell you what, we can make a deal. I'll go triple kosher, and I will observe not only Shabbat, but also Thursdays and Sundays as well. So uh, God said, I tell you what, I'll keep the water away, but it will rain with blessings. Yeah, it is. As many of you know, I'm a pediatrician, and I was in the office last week, and I saw two four-month-olds that, I, I have to say, four-month-olds are my favorite visit, that the, the kids are laughing and joyous, and it reminded me of Marnie and, and her laughter, her joyousness, um, and how much I love to be with her. Marnie and John, as you share the wine of this cup, so too now are you about to share all of life's blessings together. May its joys be heightened because like the wine itself, it is sweet. And may whatever bitterness there is in life be that much easier to bear because you share it as well. When it comes to your daughter bringing home prospective mates, there's of course never anyone who's good enough. I have to say that John has come as close as possible to a perfect bar. Do you, John, take Marnie to be your wife, promising to love, cherish, and protect her, whether in good fortune or in adversity, and to seek together with her a life hallowed by the faith and people of Israel. I do. And do you, Marnie, take John to be your husband, promising to love, cherish, and protect him, whether in good fortune or in adversity, and to seek together with him 
a life hallowed by the faith and people of Israel. I do. Now, you're going to present a ring to your beloved, and who better to present the ring to the presenter than Wony Mivis. <laughs> Ronnie, do you want to show everyone the box? I, I know we wanted to show everyone the box. M-E-R-V-I-S. 1-800-HER-LOVE, thank you. When Jonathan was born, we named him Jonathan Earl Mervis. We didn't realize it then, but phonetically, the initials spelled gem. And as it turned out, he was a perfect little gem. He was not quite polished in those days, but still he revealed a flash of brilliance and a spark that lights the room. Thirty-something years have passed, and now we're thrilled to welcome Marnie, another perfect gem into our family. With this ring, be thou consecrated unto me as my wife, according to the laws of Moses and the people of Israel. And so, as you have both acted out of love and out of affection, in accordance with the rites and the ceremonies of our Holy Torah, I now pronounce you, John and Marnie, to be husband and wife. We ask that God's blessing rest upon you, that you go forth from here, you carry forth with you the blessing of this moment, the blessing of this day, with all the happiness, all the joy that's felt not just by you, but by every single person that's here, because we are here to celebrate this moment with you. It's surreal to look around this room, see so many people that we love all into one room, sweating together, loving each other. It's beautiful. When Marnie gets up to hug me, you'll see that I have about seven inches on her, but I look up to Marnie for so many reasons. She is effortlessly charming, wise. Her kindness and generosity truly know no bounds. And she is one of the most selfless people I have ever known. And John, you are lucky, of course, to have this one by your side. And I couldn't be happier that she's found someone worthy of her love and adoration in you. For Marnie and I, Grandma Dady and her late sister, Aunt Faye, have always been our role models for how siblings should support each other. They lived in a joined house or next door to one another for their entire lives. John, this is the future that Marnie and I have agreed upon. <laughs> and lucky for you, I have a sick neighbor in the adjoined house next to ours. <laughs> Please, everyone, raise your glasses to my future housemates, Marnie and John, as we celebrate their new life together. Mazel tov. Tonight, I'm going to give everyone a little peek into the genius and the mind of John Mervis to explore the question of why life is so much more fun with John. At one point, he stole Steve Jobs' thunder by creating not the iPad, but the world's most expensive diamond-studded iPad. Gizmodo ran a story titled, If You Ordered an iPad, Cancel It, This Is The One You Need. My all-time favorite was when John convinced the Redskins faithful in the fall of 2009 
that the only way to save the franchise was for the Mervis family to buy the Redskins, even though Dan Snyder had no intention of selling the team. John's life, as you can see, was always full, but never complete. Not until he met Marty. And it was perfectly John and Marnie from the moment they started dating. Their calendars didn't sync up for a month, so their first date was planned far in the future. But they grew tired of that plan, threw out all the rules, and somehow managed to sneak in two separate pre-dates prior to their first date, which makes no sense, and yet makes all the sense in the world. There is no other couple I know that seeks life with such passion and rigor than John and Marty. Thank you for being you, for laughing with me every day. You are the kindest, most open-minded, down-for-anything person that I've ever met, and I just feel incredibly, incredibly lucky to get to be with you.